know about you, but it's something when we come in communion with God. God does things that we can't do. You know, even in the midst of trouble, somebody say trouble, but say trouble don't last. It don't last. It don't last. You know why it doesn't last? Because God is on our side. The Bible says that if he is for us, then who can be against us? This morning, I want to encourage somebody who's listening on the internet. I want to encourage somebody out there right now that needs to hear what thus said the Lord concerning them. Not what Nike says, not what the world says, not what my neighbor says, but what thus said the Lord has to say on my behalf. So I just want to read something to you. Even when trouble hits your life, it says this, and um, it says, the Lord is good. He is a stronghold in the time of trouble. But listen to this last part. I got to include this last part. And it says, he knows those who trust him. Amen. So when that trouble hits your life, who are you trusting? Are you trusting your finances? Are you trusting in your own understanding, which the Bible tells us, lean not on my own understanding, but to lift the name of Jesus up this morning, given the glory this morning that he deserves. It says, even though, even though, even though we may be hard pressed on every side, yet I'm not crushed. Are you crushed this morning? I'm not crushed. Are you perplexed? Are you in despair? Are you persecuted? I'm not even struck down this morning because the God that I serve is upon me this morning. His glory reigns on us. How many know that to be true this morning? His glory reigns down on us this morning. And because his glory reigns down on us, I can go through the storm. I can go through that fire. I can do all things through who? Come on. Through who? Christ who strengthens me. And if he's strengthening me, he's building me up. He's encouraging my heart. I'm connecting with his spirit. He's connecting with my mind, making it in right alignment with what he has for me. And today I can walk in the boldness. I can walk in the fullness of who he is this morning. I can walk and talk. I can say the right words, sing the right songs. I can worship him in spirit and in truth this morning. So how many are ready, ready to praise him in spirit and truth this morning? That's right. All right. So I'm going to leave you with this. I want to leave you with this. It says this. So even though you may go through the trouble, if you live long enough, you're going to go through it. Not once, but several times, right? Amen. But he says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Hallelujah. As we go into worship, I want you to just go into that secret place that you have right now. I want you to just go ahead and release everything to God right now. Close your eyes. This is only between you and your father. Mm -hmm. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. I lift my hands in prayer.
guest elder and we have a lay for them elder smith and sister pamela smith Hallelujah. all the way from zion temple they are the music ministers at zion temple in denver colorado we thank them for coming and we do know that on sundays you want to take a break off in times but we appreciate yes. you coming over taking your time to be with yes. us on saturday practicing with the team as well as today. Give them another hand, amen. amen. We're so glad to have you this morning. We welcome all of our internet listeners that are watching by Facebook and YouTube. We thank you for being with us. We wish you could be here, but we hope that the Spirit of the Lord and what you're feeling is resonating through either your living room, your job, wherever you're listening, in the bedroom. We thank you for joining us. So let's give all of our visitors a great big hand. Thank you very much. You could have gone anywhere else, but you chose Pacific Revival Center. We just want to remind you, we have Bible study on Thursday nights at 7.30. If you can't be here with us in the sanctuary, you're welcome to join us on the internet, looking up our website, pacificrevivalcenter.org, and on our Facebook. You can look us up and join us in Bible study. We'd love to interact with you on Facebook and YouTube. Minister Jason's going to receive our offering, and I believe Sister Pam's going to lead us in a song during offering. Amen? God bless you. How many faithful tithers and givers do we have in the house of God this morning? <laughs> faithful tithers and givers. Yes, all right. So if you have your Bibles, please turn me quickly to Genesis chapter 4. As you're on your way there, we know the scripture says to bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And the Lord goes on to say, to try me now in this and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven 
to pour out for you such blessing that there might be room enough, that there won't be room enough to receive it. So here I'm reading out of the New King James Version this morning. And here in verse number three, it says, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Sounds good, right? I mean, yeah, it he, brought it, he brought his offering to the Lord. He brought it to the right place. <laughs> now, verse 4 says, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Yeah. But verse 5 it says, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. Hmm. But they both brought it to the Lord. They both brought an offering. It seems right. But the Lord didn't accept it. And it says, Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. You know, another word for countenance is also behavior. You know, and sometimes our behavior towards God changes when he doesn't accept our offering or we don't see the, the blessings coming in. But how many of you guys know that the church is not a bank? You know, you guys ever accidentally ripped a 20 and you taped it and you took it to the bank and they accepted it? (laughs) You know, but we expect God to accept and receive our tithes and our offering. When we have touched it, we've cut it in half. But he understands, right? You know, you ever try paying half your mortgage for six months? You're going to get a nice little letter. (laughs) Thank you. We appreciate your, you know, but we decided to foreclose on your property. You're going to get a nice little sign, right? But the thing that's interesting, right, is that a lot of times gifts always seem the same, right? You guys know what these are, right? Gift cards. Oh, yeah. You know, got Cheesecake Factory. You know, Ooh. hey, there's an iTrampoline one here, too. <laughs> Fun card. <laughs> got an Amazon gift card. Wow. Bath that. and Body Works. Oh, yeah, that's good right there. Interesting, right? <laughs> These are all gifts, right? Huh, what do I have here? Ooh. It just happens to be a $10,000 bill. This is also a gift too, right? <laughs> all these are gifts. But the thing that's unique is that the gifts are not interchangeable. If I take Bath and Body Works and I just finish eating my meal and I give them the Cheesecake Factory card, <laughs> The gift is not acceptable. Okay, hold on. Let me try something else. If I shop on Amazon and then I got this I trampoline card, <laughs> your order's still going to be in your basket, right? <laughs> it's not going to close out. But I have this $10,000 bill. I don't know who that is, but I'm pretty sure the Secret Service will come looking for me for penning how to fit money. The gift is not acceptable. (laughs) But yet, we call heaven, and we want to talk to God, and we're like, okay, God, I have my tithes. I have my offering, you know. But um, the phone's ringing. They patch it into God. God says, hello, you know. They're like, yeah, there's, there's Joe. He's on line one. He wants to make a payment plan on his offering and his tithes, and he wants to know who to make the check out for. And also, he wants to know how far out he can post date it. So he pulls it out, and he's waiting. And he comes back. Angel says, the Lord said you can make the check out to yourself because that's as far as it's going to go. <laughs> you see, we have treated God like he's a bank. <laughs> we have treated God like he's something common. We have treated the offering like it's something common, like, like it doesn't mean nothing. But the scripture says that the tithe that is holy, it is something is holy and it belongs to God. I cannot touch it and be right. I cannot touch it and expect the windows of heaven to open. But he says to bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And he says to try me now in this. And see if I not open up the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So I know God doesn't give out gift cards. <laughs> I know he doesn't take post-dated checks. <laughs> he doesn't take counterfeit money. But 
I do know he does receive gifts that are from your heart. You have to have a purpose in your heart and give from your heart. And when you give to the Lord what is rightfully his, you will be blessed. And share that blessing with others. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for the joy, for the peace that you have given us to tithe and to give into your kingdom. You have been so faithful, Father. Through every season, through every valley, through every trial that you have brought us through. We honor you, dear God, and we bless you. We remember you this day. We bring our tithes and our offering to you, knowing that you are the only one that can multiply such a small thing but cause it to be more than enough in every area of our life, and not just our life, but in the lives of others, and more than enough for the church that we may speak your word, not just here, but throughout the world in Jesus' name. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's please stand and say our vision statement. Our vision statement is going to be here on the board. <laughs> All right. All together now, God has given Pacific Revival Center a mandate to train and equip and to send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. He has anointed and qualified us to preach the good news, to bind up and to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and the spiritual captives, and to open the prison doors and eyes of those who are bound. He has sent us to comfort all who mourn, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And we shall be called priests of the Lord, and shall be named ministers of our God. And our descendants shall be known among the nations, and our offspring among the peoples, and all who see them will know that we are a people whom the Lord has blessed. Please follow the directions of the ushers. i 
just thank you right now because we know that you will also we truly know that you will come on while you're standing to your feet say it's my time it's my time for salvation it's my time for healing it's my time for blessing it's my time for change no weapon can stop me no weapon can prosper I'm superior I'm superior to the forces of darkness it's my appointed time. It's my set time. It's manifestation time. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give it a round of praise. Lord, we just thank you right now. But we know that God will. God is willing. The young man asked him, said, Lord, if you will, you can heal me. And Jesus says, I will. He's willing. Amen. He is not only able, but he is willing. He's willing to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you ask or think. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. It's good to, good to be in the house. Thank you guys for coming over and visiting us, and we hope you guys are coming back again. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to get back to doing our conferences sometime next year. Amen? You know, you know what? Uh, our, 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 our mantra here, our mandate here at Pacific Revival Center is... Um, Revival through conference, evangelism through television, revival through conference. I got to change that because we're on the internet and we go on the internet live, everything now. So we kind of changed television, didn't we? But we still got to do revival. We still got to do revival. And I like being in person, amen? Everybody wants to do Zoom, Zoom conferences and all that. I'm really, I want to do it in person, amen? I want to be in the room, the same room with those that are anointed, amen? Hallelujah. But let's get ready to get into our new series, and we, I started on it before the ordination talking about hope, and I believe we're seeing, the, we're seeing a hopelessness going through our nation right now. It's such a hopelessness. Things happen because, uh, because we don't have hope. When people are ready to give up, they're liable to do anything. Am I telling the truth? They'll do anything. They'll go shoot up a place because they just feel hopeless. They, uh, what, what they call, some of it they call a suicide by cop. You know, go out and have a shootout with the police. Uh, just last week, someone went and shot, they did a big shootout in, in Federal Express and then killed himself afterwards. Hopelessness. Hopelessness. Not having any hope. And that comes from trusting in the wrong thing, amen? Trusting in the wrong, putting your trust in the wrong thing. The Bible tells us, uh, uh, Jeremiah says this way, uh, David said this way, he said, why so cast down, O my soul? Put your trust in God. Put your trust in Him. Amen? And we're going to start on a series. We'll be doing, teaching on Thursday night Bible study on hope. Hope. We don't want our young people to be feel hopeless. They talk about the suicide rate among young people, right? But that's because no hope. No hope. Lack of hope. Hope is important. How many know hope is a spiritual gift? What are the three major gifts? The three major spiritual gifts? Not speaking in tongues, not laying on hands, not raising the dead, faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. Bible, Paul said these are the major gifts. Faith, hope, and love. Tell somebody you need all three. For any one of them to work, you need all three. For love to work, you need hope. He loves me, he loves me not. 
<laughs> in other words, he says, I hope he loves me. <laughs> you need all three in order for either one to work. You need faith. You need love. You need hope. Amen? Are you ready? Turn in your Bibles with me. And I'm a, let me read a scripture to you real quick. Uh, and we'll get started. The first scripture I want to read is over in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 27. It says, to whom God would make known, and talking about the Gentiles, it says, to whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. He's making known to the whole world it's manif tell somebody it's manifestation time. Paul said in the book of Romans, he says, for the whole creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. What, what they're looking for is Christ in you. The whole world is, look, when you go to work tomorrow, the, the, the people around you are looking for Christ in you. Tell somebody Christ in you. Not in the book. You don't have to, we used to carry those big old Dakes Bibles. I mean, remember the Dakes. I, 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 I just wasn't going to carry no Dakes Bible because that was just too big to be walking around with. That was just too large to be walking around. But guys, I got me a Dakes Bible. But the world is not looking for the Bible, the book. They're looking for Christ in you. Look at somebody point to them and say, they're looking for Christ in you. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. Tell somebody, let hope in. Let hope in. Last week we discovered we must be transformed or we will transfer what happens to us to others around us. We must be transformed. I, I, you know, I didn't finish that message, and that wasn't last week. That was a couple of weeks ago before our ordination, and I got halfway through, and I'm going to finish it up next week, but I wanted to get into this one this week. Christ in you, the hope of glory, and letting hope come into your life. And hoping in the wrong thing can kill you. Hoping in the wrong thing can kill you, amen? If you put your trust and hope in the wrong people and the wrong things, it can destroy you. How many of you believe that? See, what you believe in the future determines your now. What you believe is going to happen in the future determines what's going to happen to you right now because you make decisions based on it. Think about it. Think about it. What we're going through right now, everybody has an opinion. Some opinions are the wrong opinions. They have a wrong, the wrong opinion. Some of them have the, a different opinions just about taking a shot. My only issue with taking the core of a shot is I don't like needles. Can they, when, 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 when can you do that in a pill form? Amen. Amen. It's, it's the needles. It's not the shot. It's the needles. <laughs> my wife went and got hers yesterday, and she said, you want to come get yours? I said, I'm going to wait till I go to my doctor, because the nurse, she, she knows how to get a shot the right way, right? And, uh, and uh, she sneaks it up on me. She'll be talking to me and taking my blood pressure. Next to the, uh, you got to take this up. No, I'm not going to take it today. Uh, uh, when come the regular flu shot. And now one shot I did take that one for, um, what, what, what do they call it? Um, shingles. Shingles. They came up. I'm so glad they developed a shot for that. How many of you ever had? If you ain't never had shingles, you'll be glad they developed a shot for singles, shingles. Because you don't ever want to get that. Amen. You don't ever want to get that one. That one hurts. Everything, everything in you hurts. When I was growing up, I tell the story, I said, when, when we were complaining about taking the polio shot. But my mother made us take it. Because my sister had polio. Amen. Some things can save your life if you put your trust in them. Amen. I don't put my trust 100% in anything in the world. You know why? Because you can't trust anything in the world. Because anything in the world can pass away. They've already said, I just read yesterday, all of you that just got your second dose, they already say you're going to have to take another dose six months from now. <laughs> I just read that last night. <laughs> you're going to have to take another shot six, six months from now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if you don't go look at go, the, it was on the news last night. Amen. <laughs> they can't put your trust in the world, can you? But you got to put your trust in God. Somebody, tell somebody, be like David. David said, why so cast down on my soul? Put your trust in God. Put your trust in him. Amen? How many of you are not afraid to fly? I'm not afraid to fly 
but I pray every time I get on a plane. Because I don't know the pilot. I don't know the pilot. I don't know what he, he might have been drinking. You know, they had, we had a couple of airlines that the pilot just decided he was hopeless. His life was hopeless, and he decided, I'm just going to crash the plane. And he took a lot of people with him. They took a, a how many of you remember the flight that was, was it, it was TWA just back in the, uh, in the 80s. And then just recently, uh, just a few years ago, it was the Malaysian flight. They still haven't found that flight. They still haven't found the flight. So we put our trust in God. My hope is in, how they used to say it, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15. I'm going to read verse 15 through 20. Amen. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you. Paul says, after I heard of your faith in the Lord that you converted and the love unto all the saints. I, 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 I want you to get that out of there. He heard that they had faith. And he heard that they had love. He says, now you need to add something to that. You need to add one more thing to that, right? It says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and in knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. He said, I want to give you hope now. I want you to know what the hope of his calling is, what you're trusting in, what you're believing for. Not that somebody just laid hands on you and got saved, but why are you saved? Amen? Look, I like what Paul did. He says, that you, when, when you heard that the missionaries came through and built you and get, changed you into the believing in God and you got faith to believe now, he said, you got faith to believe, and you, you were shown the love of God. He says, now I want to give you some spiritual gifts also. They gave you faith and love. Now let me give you revelation. Isn't that great? Wisdom. Isn't that great? Knowledge. Understanding. Those seven spiritual gifts, the Bible says that are the eyes of the Lord that you read about in the book of Isaiah chapter 11. It says the seven spirits, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and quick understanding, amen? Quick understanding. He says, but I want to give you the hope of your calling. Look at somebody say, do you know the hope of your calling? Of your calling. You're called to hope, and you're called to spread hope through the world. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an old-timer now. I'm, Percy, I'm, a, I'm getting up there with you. I might catch up one day. Amen? Amen. There you go. He said, I'll be here. Amen. But when we were growing up in the hope of our calling, I listened to the songs that people sing now and that, that, that the world sings. See, when we were growing up and we were called to, uh, to have hope for a freedom that we didn't have as black people, we were singing songs from the church. We were singing songs of hope. Now we're listening to songs from the world that tear us down and expect things to change for the better. It ain't gonna happen. Because only the hope can, only hope can bring about the goodness of the Lord. Only hoping in God can bring about the goodness. We were singing songs like, we shall overcome. That brings hope, doesn't it? That brings hope. We weren't calling our women all kind of names and everything in our songs. We weren't calling each other dogs. Do you know in the Jewish culture, it was an insult to call someone a dog? And we say, that's my dog. There's something wrong with that. Something wrong with that. That doesn't endure hope. That doesn't, our songs don't endure hope anymore. We need to get back to singing songs. See, I love them songs that are in the church because they build me up. They, when I'm praising God, I'm, look at somebody say, as long as you're on this earth, you're going through something. Tell them, say, don't kill yourself. Grow up. You need hope. You need hope. You lack hope. If you believe that tomorrow is going to be great, you will get through today. Amen? You will get through today. What you believe in the future determines your now. Amen? Paul says, and what is the exceeding great 
riches. Oh, let me go back. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. Not your calling, but his calling. Amen. The hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what, the, what is the exceeding, exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. I'm not just trusting in fables. I'm trusting in the one who has all power, all power, which he wrought, he worked it out. Wrought, we don't use that word. He worked it out in Christ. He perfected his power and his glory in Christ. When you see Christ, that's the son of the, that's the glory of God. Which he worked it out in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. If Jesus is in heavenly places, guess what? David said, whom have I in heaven but you? He was prophesying. There's none on earth I desire beside you. My heart and my strength may fail. But that's okay. That's okay because God is the strength of my heart and my portion. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Forever. He's never going to give up on us. He's never going to give up on you. He's never going to give up on me. Amen. He's our strength and he's our portion forever. Amen. The hope for which he has called us, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 says, you can't live without hope. I like what Victor Franco said, what he wrote in his story. He says, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Amen? Hope is the engine of our lives. It's the engine. It's why we live. So we don't want to live without hope. Amen? You don't want to be hopeless. The world, when you get on television, the world is trying to take all hope from you so they can control you. You can't control someone that has hope. You can't control someone that has hope. But it's so important to hope in the right things to put your hope in the right thing, in the right person, and the person we trust in is Jesus Christ. Amen? I see the world through the word of God. Through, I see the world through revelations. I see the world through Ephesians. I see the world through the Gospels. I see the world through Leviticus. I use the whole Bible. How about you? I use the whole Bible. I use the whole Bible. I see the, the, you know, it's going to take you your whole life and you still won't master the whole word of God. You won't master it. I see the world. I look at what's going on and I say, Lord, what are you doing? Because I can get confused. I can feel helpless. I guarantee you, I don't care how great you are, you're going to find yourself in a circumstance where you feel like nothing you have works. Nothing you have. Your resources just won't get you out of it. But God can. But God can. Amen? But God can. Choose to place, I choose to place my ultimate trust in big hopes, in big dreams, instead of little hopes and little dreams. Amen? Big hopes and big dreams. We'll talk about that in a minute. Big hopes and big dreams. I, I love the organization that we're part of, Victory Churches International, because... Dr. George and Hazel, they have big hopes and big dreams. They start little churches, but they believe for many churches. They don't believe for one big, large church. They believe for many churches, everywhere they can go. They, if we can plant 10 churches with this neighborhood, they're, great, they're happy for that. Big hopes and big dreams. They wanted to see the word, the word of God go around the world, and that's why we have over 4,000 churches in Victory Churches International. Because they said, we're going to plant churches everywhere we go. Everything, every opportunity, every reason is an opportunity. Every, every circumstance is an opportunity to plant a church. Amen? To plant a church. I, I love the testimony when, the, when we, a, a few years ago when we had the big tsunami that hit Indonesia. 
and they had been praying about how to get into Indonesia, a Muslim nation. They planted a church right on the spot where the, where the tsunami hit. And guess who paid for it? The Canadian government. The Canadian, because Victory Churches International was so big, well-known in, in the government in Canada, Canada wanted to give money to the tsunami relief, and they said, well, you know, Victory Church is already over there. Let's just give them a million dollars to go. And they said, and see how that works? That takes big hope to do that, doesn't it? It takes big hope. And, 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 um, we have churches all over India because Pastor Dr. Hazel went over there, and she, her heart was pulled because she saw the young women because they could not raise a dowry to ever get married because of the culture the women were killing themselves. Well, the mother-in-laws, because they couldn't pay the dollars, would pour gasoline on the, uh, the, 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 the daughter-in-laws to burn them up, to get rid of them, right? They said, you, we got to do something about this. And guess what they didn't do? They didn't go march. They didn't go march. You know what they did? She said, let's start some sewing schools so that the women can earn their dowries. And in starting the sewing schools, the women brought their children. They said, we, we, we need to teach the children. There's an opportunity to start a Bible class for the children, right? So we started, they started Bible schools for the children, right? And so now that just expanded until we got you. Uh, we, we, they raised up Dr. Jacelyn, who was a well-known missionary, a well-known evangelist in southern India, where just about, you know, if you know India, when, 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 when they split up India, Back in the, what was it, about around 1930 and all that, when the, when the British government left, they said, okay, we'll give northern India to the Hindus, southern India to the Christians, and then the Muslims can just be under the Hindus uh, in northern India, but the Muslims didn't like that. That's why we have Pakistan, because they broke off from India and started Pakistan. That's why they fight over Kashmir right now. But what, what happens was, he was a well-known evangelist in southern India, and the Lord spoke to him and said, you need to do something that's going to last. Instead of just preaching to people. So he joined Victory Churches International. He joined Victory Churches. And he said, but Lord, I want to do something. I want some hard ground. So he went to northern India and started planting churches. Right there where the Hindus were. And the Hindus tried their best to run him out. They tried to blow him up. They blew themselves up. Designing an IUD for him. To blow him up and blew themselves up. 17 years he labored to plant churches. Now he's planted. And when I was over there years ago, he says, he says uh, Bishop Lewis, he said, my goal is to put a church in every province. That's like every state. And there's 28 states in India. He says, now we've done that. He says, now I got to put, put a church in every, I got to put a church in every county in India. Amen. Those are big hopes right there. Big hopes and big dreams. Am I right? But we're too busy trying to believe God for a car. Lord, if you can just get me a car. Guess what? You live in the United States. You can get a car. Tell me, that's the easiest thing to get. That's the easiest thing to get in the car. United States is a car. That's like saying, I believe the Lord to give me a big lighter. <laughs> a flashlight. I can understand somebody believing God for a flashlight over in Papua New Guinea. Back in the wilderness in Papua New Guinea. Where they still rubbing rocks together. I can believe the Lord for a hammer. How many of you have to believe the Lord for a hammer? No, see, but you go to Papua New Guinea, a hammer and an axe. Oh, thank God I got a hammer and an axe. Think about it. We are so tied up on chasing after little hopes and little dreams. And God wants us. Jesus said this way. He says, the things I do, the things I do, you shall do greater. Amen? But it takes hope, doesn't it? We're always talking about hopes. We're always talking about hopes. We talk about little hopes. Everybody comes up to me uh, all week long, and you have conversations with them, and you listen to their little hopes and little dreams. Amen. We're always hoping, and we hope we'll we hope we'll graduate. We hope we'll graduate from school. Look at somebody say, "If you stay in and you don't quit in the United States, they'll get you through, won't they?" <laughs> so, how many of you know some people that shouldn't have graduated? Pastor Drew, you know my brother Kevin and how wild he used to, I'll tell you about the stories about him, right? Now, he, he has his own dental lab now, he, but, 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 but that's not what he had when we was growing up now. And, and, and my sister Willetta and, and Rob and them, they said they went to, they, they made a, a, a special trip to go up to the school. We don't believe he's graduating. <laughs> we don't believe he's graduating. 
See, if you stay in, I don't care how crazy his life was on the outside of school, he still finished school because he stayed in school. Amen. He stayed in school and he graduated. We hope to get accepted into college. If you study and do your grades, you, you, you get you, uh, plenty of colleges. You might not be the college. It might not be Harvard. I'm not high on them anyway, right? But you'll get into college, am I right? You'll get into college. We live in the United States. You know, if you go over to uh, uh, Western Samoa, do you know you have to pay to go, for your children to go to school all the way through school? From kindergarten all the way up, you have to pay for them to go to school. How many of us have to do that? School is free in the United States. School is free, except for some colleges, amen? Except for some schools. We hope we will make the team. If you practice and you work out, you make the team, amen? How much time do you have invested in your hopes? I want to ask you that today. How much time do you have invested in your hopes and dreams? I mean, I mean, what's the level of your degrees? Uh, mine is a GED, so it tells you how much time I got invested in education. Some have high school diplomas. I got a high school diploma. Some have four years of college. Some have, what is it, six years? Is it six years to get your master's? Eight years to get your PhD. And then what are you doing with it after you get it? What are you doing with it after you get it? You invested all that time. I got a friend, he says, Kelsey, it took me 18 years to get an eight-year degree. He spent 18 years, but he got it, but he got it. He got it. Now, for the last five years, he's been trying to figure out what to do with it. What to do with it. What to do with it. What do I do with this degree that I spent 18 years getting? What is it going to do for me? How long have you been saved? Can I ask you a question? How long have you been walking in faith? How long have you been walking in love? How long have you been believing God for great things? How much time do you have invested in God? Can I ask you that today? How much time? Dr. George says, I said, Dr. George, what school did you go to? You know, asked him that years ago. Did it make, make, make you guys want to go out and start a church? He said, we didn't. He said, me and my wife was having marital problems. <laughs> right? We were having marital problems. And it was, it was either turn to God or get a divorce. And we turned to God. He said, when we turned to God and we got saved, we started saying, well, you know what? God saved us for something then. What did he save us for? And they found out, they just, they said, well, let's step out and just start starting some churches. And they just started starting churches. They didn't have to spend all eight years of school. I got eight years of school, so I'm ready. No, they were ready when they got saved. They were ready. They were, they were evangelists at heart. If you knew both of them, she's from Australia. He's from England. He's driven, he's driven all across, across the country of Africa. Now, that's an experience. Because I've driven from, the, from north, the north part of South Africa all the way down to the south. And it's an experience driving across Africa. Amen. She's been all, she's very adventurous. If you, if you really want to do some real, real, real missionary work, we go to India. She said, Let, we had, we look, we was finishing up the revival a little early. And she said, oh, and it was Thanksgiving here in, in the U.S. But the, the, him from Canada, she's from Australia. That really didn't mean a lot to them. I wanted to get back home for Thanksgiving. But they said, they said, no, since we got more time, let's go up to and visit some of the churches up in the Himalayas. And they tell me, said, the trip is three, three weeks. It's a three-day trip to drive up there because you're driving in a van. It's not like they got interstates. Be in a van for three days, flying in. And I was so happy Dr. Jason said, no. He said, I got a better plan for Kelsey. I'm going to send him up to Agra to preach some revivals. I said, thank God, because Agra is a tour spot, just like Hawaii. Got some nice hotels. <laughs> I got to stay in a whole nice hotel, and I preached the revival, but I had to wait for them to get back from, uh, uh, from the Himalayas. 
so that we could all fly back together. And I'm sitting there waiting. I said, you know, I could have just went on and went home because I'm sitting there in Agra. But I'm enjoying it. I'm seeing all the sites in Agra, the Taj Mahal, you know, all of the different sites, the Red, the red Fortress and all that, and enjoying Agra while there. She was enjoying that trip from the Himalayas, right, in the van. Can you imagine being in the van for three days with a group of people? That's not your family. <laughs> right? And you're not on no interstate. And India's not like, I told, I told India, I said, y'all don't use anything till it just can't be used anymore because you get on a train over there, you think you're in the movie Casablanca. You would literally think you're in the movie Casablanca. I said, wow, this takes me way back to some movies I watched with, with uh, what's the guy's name in Casablanca? Humphrey Bogart and all of them, right? <laughs> As it takes you all the way back, right? So, wow, this train is real old. I can imagine where to be flying with you guys, right? But experiencing some things, you want to experience some things? They, they believe for the great things. They believe for greatness, amen? How do you? Do you believe for greatness? Let me move on so I can get ready to finish. Little hopes. Little hopes. A heart full of hope, but we either have no hope on, on one end of the scale or we got crazy hopes on the other end of the scale. No hope or crazy hopes, amen? I, I wanted to write in some of the things, to little hopes, what I call little hopes. How about one career, C-A-R-E-E-R? Career. Can you think of some other little hopes? Anyone? Little hopes. A car, right? <laughs> right? Right? Little hopes. Little, lot of hope. <laughs> right? Can anybody think of some little hopes? Relationships. Did I get it? Relationships. Little hopes, right? Pay raise. Vacation. Got any time on the books? You don't have to believe for a vacation, do you? Right. You ain't got no time on the books. Vacation. Little hopes. When we have the prayer line, what do you ask for? I'm believing in God that I'm going to get a vacation. Why? How about work for food? How many holding a sign up? When you see somebody holding a sign up saying, work for food. Have you ever met anybody that's willing to work for food? Maybe in other countries, right? You know, like India, because there's a lot of poverty there, so people will work for food. But I don't think you really get, uh, have you, try, try this one time. Go get someone that when they hold up that sign, say, get in the car. I want you to paint my house. I'm going to make you a nice hamburger. I'm going to give you a real, uh, better yet. I'm going I'm, I'm to get Pastor Jason to make you a cake. Because they, they, they can really bake. Pastor Jason and, 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 and um, Daisy, they can bake. We're going to have them bake you a cake for painting my house. See how long they stay. Work for food. No, they ain't going to work, is it? Little hopes, what are you hoping for? What are you hoping for? It creates anxiety. We, have, we get anxious over little things, amen? Paul wants us to trust a hope that's not touched by circumstances. A hope that's not touched by the cares of the world. Ephesians chapter 117. Having Jesus, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, knowledge, big hopes, spirit of wisdom, nothing beats that. Revelation, nothing beats revelation. You see it coming. You'll see it coming, amen? You won't be shocked because you see it coming. Knowledge, how to handle it when it comes. What to do when it comes, when it happens. Spirit of wisdom, revelation, knowledge. See, so Paul says, in order to do that, we need to know him better. 
knowing him better. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, and John chapter 17, verse 3. Philippians says, that I may know him, that I may know him. Not what he gives, but him. Not the gift, but the giver. I want to know who gave you this. I want to know how you got it. I'm not satisfied with just getting it. I want to know how you got it. My mentor, Jeff Cherry, is going on to be with the Lord. He says, Kelsey, we know how we got it. So we can get it again. We can get it again. Because we know how we got it. We worked for it. Amen. The God of our Lord Jesus, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Paul says, I, I want to die like him. He said, no, I want to be made conformable to his death, meaning he died and rose up again. He died and got up again. He died and got up again. I want to be able to have that testimony also. I want to be one that says, I'm going to get up again also, amen? And this is life eternal, that they, may, they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent, the only true God. Jesus is the same. He's not going to change. All of my little hopes and dreams I put my trust in can change. How many times we changed cars, Pastor Drew? How many times have we changed cars? All of my little hopes and dreams can change. We haven't changed cars because we wanted to. Amen. All of my little hopes and dreams can change. But he can't change. He can't change. Jesus don't change. Jesus Christ is the same. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 and 9. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Amen. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same tomorrow. He's the same forever. Paul says, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is good. Look at somebody say, it's good. That the heart. It's good that the heart. I want, I want, I'm, I'm going to close with this one. It's good that the heart. Put Somebody put your hand on your heart. You know where your heart is? In the Asian, in the, in the, um, what do you call it, Asian culture, this is your heart. Am I right? This is your heart. The center of your, they said this is where the spirit comes from, the soul. Amen. Be carried or not with that very first strange doctrines, for it is good. Be, be not carried about with strange doctrines, because it's good. It's a good thing. That the heart be established with grace. That the heart be established with grace. Not with meats. Which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. In other words, he's saying here, the heart must be established by grace. Not things. That's really powerful right there. The heart, Brother Booker, the heart has to be established by grace. Not by how much I achieved. I need to have the grace of God in my heart because what I achieve can pass away. But grace is, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means his grace, he told Paul, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. That means that as long as I got God's grace, give. This is not an offering message, but the Bible says give, and he's able to do what? Make all things appear. No. Make all grace abound. So you'll have a sufficiency. All grace, not things. Not things, but all grace, right? All grace. The heart must be established by grace, not with meat, not with things. We follow TV programs that lead us to chasing after things both Christian and secular programs that lead, just turn on the TV late at night. You see Christian programs that have you chasing after things. 
You'll see secular programs that have you chasing after things. Chasing after things, putting your trust in things. If you just get this little tube of holy water, John said it this way. He says, you need more grace. You need more grace. He giveth more grace to the humble. Humble yourself under God. He will exalt you in due time. He says, but you need, John says, you need more grace. Grace is the currency in the kingdom of God. I need more money. No, you need more grace. You need more grace. He doesn't want me chasing after things, chasing after money, chasing after cars, chasing after houses, chasing after things. I should be seeking the grace of God. He'll make all grace of God. He says, and when I give, he'll give, he'll make all grace abound. I mean, I'll get a lot of grace. Doors are open. I don't like you because you black. So what? I ain't, I ain't even focusing on that. I don't care if you don't like me because I'm black. God likes me. And God said, when a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make even his enemy be at peace with him. I just need some grace. I need the grace of God. Go ahead, somebody. <laughs> every multi-level marketing campaign, every give to get, give to get, Give to get church campaign. The Lord told me there's 10 of you out there. He's going to bless you with a hundredfold. How many of you remember the money coming to me now campaign? Money coming to me now. And then you go give your money. You throw your money on the altar. The Bible says give as God has given to you. Amen? Are you mature enough to know how much God has given you? Don't, don't write no, brother, just write that check by faith. By faith, just by faith, write that $1,000 check and just believe the Lord for it. The bank ain't going to be happy about that. We've had guys, we have guys do that. And when they come back and says, give me the offering, they want me to write them a check by faith. I said, no, you told everybody else to write that check by faith. You take all those faith checks. And put them in your account. If you don't have faith to put them in your account, why should I have faith to put them in my account? Am I telling the truth? This is the season when you hear those kind of messages. Uh, we, oh, brother, you raised a thousand dollars with faith checks. Write me one check for ten thousand dollars, and then I put all the faith checks in my account, and he puts my check in his account. I said, no, you told them to have faith, so you put that faith check, all those faith checks in your account. And you can believe right along with all those people that you told them, just write it by faith, amen? Hey, everybody's supposed to have faith, not just the people, amen? And, and every time I tell them, they tell me, and I tell them that, they said, no, you just keep those checks. Don't worry about that. Just give me the cash. You just keep those checks. Oh, there's something wrong with the program. If, if you're not willing to put them in your account, you told people to write them, am I telling the truth? If I tell you to write a check, faith check for $1,000, I, I better have faith to put it in my account. The check that you gave me, amen? Am I telling the truth or am I lying? Am I, that, that's the way it's supposed to work, right? We listen to all of them, but instead of putting our trust in God's grace and the grace of God, the grace of God, every program we hear, how many, I, I know you remember the money coming to me now thing, and I, we had to come through Hawaii. I remember some of my church members went to the program and they went down there and they, they sold and they said, we sold a thousand dollars and they came back and started asking all our church members said, because the, the pastor told them said, and over the weeks, people going to come and start giving you $10,000, right? And they was walking around our church asking people for a thousand dollars. The Lord said, you part of my seed offering that when I sold that. I said, you sold it down there in that field. Go back down to that field and wait for it to grow from that field, amen? Because when, when you sow a seed in one field, you can't go over to the next field and say, the apple tree going to produce fruit in the other field, am I right? You sowed it down there, go back over to that field. I'd have got on a plane, went back to the church. He said, what you doing here? I'm waiting for my, you say, I'm asking all, I'm in this field where I sowed the seed. I sowed it in your field. I expect to get a harvest out of your field, amen? 
but now that's not what they teach. See, we can't be carried about by those doctrines, but we need to be carried about by serious doctrines. I ask people to give because we have a need. In our organization, we ask people to give because we have a need, and people give. But we don't tell them to write on the envelope what you believe in God for. And if you do write on the envelope what you believe in God for when you're giving, put some big hopes on there. Don't put a car. Don't put a new hat. Don't put red bottoms. Come on now. Big hopes. I believe God's going to take this offering and use it to save this city. I believe churches are going to get planted everywhere that this money touches. Amen. Those are big hopes. How many of you think that's part of God's plan? Well, let me prove it to you if you don't believe it. We got some couple hands in here. Jesus said it this way. He says, take no thought, but seek ye first. The kingdom, the kingdom, take no thought, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness. All of its righteousness. Take no thought what you're going to wear. We put a lot of thought into that, don't we? We put a whole lot of thought into what we're going to wear. The outfit has to fit the occasion, doesn't it? It has to fit the occasion. All the way down to the watch and the ring and everything else, right? And he says, take no thought. But seek ye first the kingdom and all of its righteousness. And everything else will be added to you. Don't wake up and say, I had a dream about the new car I'm going to get. I had a dream about the new suit I'm going to get. You're going to outgrow it. You're going to outgrow it. It takes me 10 years to outgrow it, but I do outgrow them. Amen? You're going to outgrow it. Seek ye first the kingdom, kingdom things. God is taking care of us, and he wants my heart. Stand to your feet. He wants my heart to be established in grace, not meat and things. He wants me to say, the symbol of me being blessed is the grace of God that's on my life. How about that? The symbol of you being blessed should be the grace of God that's on you. The doors that are miraculously opening up for you. The grace of God. Paul, he told Paul, my grace. Paul said, if you could just take this one thing away from me, Lord, I, I, I would ask you for nothing else. I'd be perfect. I'm, Satan is buffeting me. If you could just get rid of him. I know how he feels. I mean, you know how he feels. If you could just get Satan up out of here, I'd be okay. But he says, no. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace should be enough. It's a bounding grace. It's grace that's ever increasing grace. His grace is that powerful. That when you need a door open, God's grace. Your money can't open it because they don't like your money. When you need a healing, God's grace. I can't afford the doctor, but the doctor says, I'll do it for you free. God's grace. You need some new training? The door open for you to get the training. You can't afford it because God's grace. Mahalo for tuning in with Pacific Revival Center. If this message touched your spirit, make sure to subscribe and follow us on all our social media accounts to connect with our online family. If you're already a follower, share our content with your family and friends. And if you'd like to support the ministry, click Give Now below. Our mission is to train, equip, and send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. And together, we can send the love of Christ to all corners of the world. We'll see you next week here at PRC, the place to be.